y'all and welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. I've got my window open. I'm hoping you can hear the little birds singing. It's a gorgeous day. We're going to be reading from our devotion, Five Minutes with Jesus, Quiet Time for Your Soul by Sheila Walsh with Sherry Craig. And it comes from page 142 and the title is Caleb's Gift. So I do have my King James Bible here that I will be reading scripture from. So let's just get started. See how God's going to talk to us. I'm excited. Caleb's Gift. How many times had Caleb bounced into the kitchen that morning? His mom had lost count. His friend's son, Caleb, had just turned eight. My friend's son, Caleb, had just turned eight, and it was the day of his birthday party. The excitement was more than this little heart could handle. <laughs> hey, buddy, his mom, Samantha, said. It's going to be a couple hours before your friends get here. I think you need some downtime. Why don't you go find a little quiet? Hearing that suggestion, Caleb bounced right out the front door. A few minutes later, Samantha looked out the kitchen window to see Caleb sitting in the grass with his legs crossed and his eyes closed. She smiled to herself. He certainly seemed to be taking the challenge to find some quiet, literally. <laughs> but as the minutes stretched out and Caleb saw, sat unmoving, Samantha began to wonder if something deeper was going on inside her little boy's heart. Even at eight, Caleb had a profound understanding of God's love, and he was, in fact, sitting on the grass listening to his heavenly father. A while later, when Caleb came back inside the house, he was overwhelmed with emotion. Mom, God loves me so much, Caleb said, and I am so thankful. Caleb had received a very special birthday gift. God had spoken to Caleb giving him a sense of his powerful love as this little one sat quietly in his presence. How sweet that God speaks to us in so many ways. He speaks through the physical blessings, the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the beauty of creation. He also speaks powerfully through our spiritual blessings, reminding us that he has created us for his glory. Redeemed us at a great cost, and destined us to live holy lives. What greater gift could a child of God receive than a fresh revelation of these realities? Our God wants to reach us with his mighty love, which gives deeper and higher than we can imagine. Are we ready to receive it today? Read Paul's prayer for fellow believers. I pray that you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus that the extravagant, dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth. Test, test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Live full lives, full in the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 14 through 19, the message. Take a cue from Caleb today. Stop bouncing off the walls for a little while. Go outside. Close your eyes. Sit still and listen. God wants to tell you that he loves you. In the quiet, we will hear God's voice repeat this wonderful truth. I love you. So our first scripture comes from 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9. And it says, it was manifest Manifested in this text means revealed. It was manifested the love of God toward us because, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Then we're going to go to the book of Psalm 63 and verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have, been, have seen thee in the sanctuary. We're going to go to Psalm 57, 9 through 11, and it says, I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Mm, I love that. Then we're going to go to the book of Ephesians, 
chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with his spiritual blessings. And blessings in this text means gifts. In heavenly places in Christ. Then we're going to go back to Psalms. Chapter 21 and verse 6. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceedingly glad with thy countenance. And thy countenance in this text means thy favor. I love favor. Then we're going to go to Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. And it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Mm. Wow. Wow. This is such a sweet, sweet devotion, and how appropriate. I mean, we're just coming off of the Easter holiday weekend, the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. I mean, if that doesn't show us how much he loves us, I don't know what is. But y'all, he's not stopping there. He is continually reminding us through this whole devotion how much he loves us, and I love that. Um. Are y'all picking up on a theme with this one? We've had this come up in several devotions here of late. Quiet time with God. Find your quiet place with God. He is really wanting that time with us. And I think the reason why is because everything is so busy. Everybody is so busy. It is just a busy, busy life we live. And we all have something going on. We all have something we're doing or want to do. There's just so many distractions, and he's wanting us to just stop and find that quiet time so we can hear his voice because his voice is not going to come over a megaphone. Now, it can. He can be loud and thunderous and powerful. I'm not saying that, but 99.9% .9 of the time when God speaks to me, it is a very soft, quiet voice that if I don't allow him time and give him time, I won't hear it. And I think that is why he is so, uh, I don't know what the word is. He's just really, really wanting to just get it through to us. Find some quiet time. Fit me in your schedule. Fit me in and let me speak to you. Because when I speak to you, I'm going to do things for you that your busy lifestyle is not going to do for you. I'm going to fill that void that everything that you got going on is never going to fill. Find that quiet time with me. And I think we could learn a lot from Caleb. I've said many times that I feel so close when I'm out, out in nature with God, out in my yard, you know, walking around, just letting the sun shine on my face, feel the wind blow, watch the birds, play in my flowers. It's just, I guess because I'm just, I'm not talking. I'm just kind of in my, my zone, I guess. And I'm in that quiet time with God and he's able to talk to me. And I love that. I love that. Um, it says, Caleb received a very special birthday gift. God had spoken to Caleb, given him a sense of his powerful love as this little one sat quietly in his presence. We can learn from our other devotions. We can praise the Lord to get into his presence. And when we are in his presence, then we need to be quiet and let him begin to speak to us. How sweet that God speaks to us in so many ways. He does. He speaks through the physical blessings, food, clothes, beauty of creation. I mean, yes, that's something we can all see and appreciate. He also speaks powerfully through our spiritual blessings, reminding us that he has created us for his glory, redeemed us at a great cost, and destined us to live holy lives. I mean... The spiritual blessings, you know, to me, they are the sweetest blessings. And it is blessings that maybe not everybody can see. You know, they may can see them. I don't know for you. Some of them, may, maybe they can see. But a lot of the spiritual blessings are, are times for me personally 
when he has come into my, my life and come into my heart and soul and just give me that inner peace, maybe everything's just been a little chaotic and I've been a little more stressed and a little more worried and I got a little more things on my mind that maybe nobody around me even knows about because I don't speak it. Sometimes I don't speak things and put it in the air. Sometimes I keep it close to the chest. And he knows that. I don't have to speak it for him to know. And sometimes that spiritual blessing is he'll just come in and calm me. And what a blessing that is. Oh, I love that. But, you know, he gives me physical blessings, you know, that I that people can see and that I can see and appreciate. And I, I was thinking, and I was going through the house the other day. Um, I'm praying about some things um, I've left in his hand. And, and he knows the desires of my heart. And in my praying for certain things, I was also really conscious to be thankful for what he already has given me. Um, I remember a time in my life, I remember when, um, that I'm, I'm living and reaping the benefits of the prayers I prayed years ago. So many prayers I prayed years ago, I'm living in answered prayers. And I don't ever, ever, ever want to get so wrapped up in praying for other things that I neglect to be thankful for what he's already blessed me with. Whether he answers those prayers I've prayed or not, it's all in his hands and it's in his will. Anytime that I pray for specific things, I always am sure to include, but your will be done, God, because you know if it's good for me or if it's not, if it's going to help me or if it's going to hinder me, if it's going to help me or hurt me. So I may be asking for some things and praying about some things that I want because I think, but ultimately, Lord, your will be done because you know. You don't have to think and wonder and let's try it out and see. You already know if it's something that I need or I don't need. That goes with spiritual blessings and physical blessings. What greater, this is a question she asked, and I mean, it's really one to ponder. What greater gift could a child of God receive than a fresh revelation of these realities? That he redeemed us at a great cost. We're just coming off of the Easter holiday weekend where he died on that old rugged cross. What a price to pay for a wretch like me. I wasn't worthy of that. I He paid a price that it was really too high for me because I was not worthy of all that, but he deemed me worthy. And he redeemed me at a great cost because that's how much he loves me. And that's how much he loves you. And destined us to live holy lives. He wants us to live holy lives because he wants all of us to end up in heaven with him for eternity. He doesn't want or desire for any of us to go to hell. That is not his objective. That's not his motive. If we do that, we have no one to blame but ourselves because he was the ultimate sacrifice. He paved the road for us. It is what we choose to do with that that will determine our fate and our destiny. Our God wants us to reach wants to reach us with his mighty love, which goes deeper and higher than we can imagine. We can't imagine it. Our minds, there's no way, even the smartest human that's ever lived, there's no way that their mind could imagine the great love and how deep it goes. There's just no way. It, it just, it's, it overwhelms me. I, can, I can't even get there. I get overwhelmed and start squalling like a baby. So take a cue from Caleb today. Let's learn from Caleb. Let's listen to what God's trying to tell us. Stop bouncing off the walls for a little while. Go outside. Close your eyes and sit still and just listen. You'll be amazed at what you will hear. And I do this quite frequently, especially when it's getting this time of year. I do this quite frequently or I have my windows open and just, you know, going about my day and uh, but some, most of the times I'll just go sit on the back bench and not have anything on, not be fooling my phone, just sit there. I might not close my eyes because I do love to watch my little birds. I love to see the flowers and 
the, the pretty sky. But I just sit there and I listen and I meditate on his goodness and how great he is. He's so good. God wants to tell you that he loves you. And he does, y'all. He loves us so much. So much. So in the quiet, we will hear God's voice repeat this wonderful truth. I love you. Now, we love to hear those words. We love to know that we're loved. I love to hear my husband tell me he loves me. I love to hear my children tell me they love me. I love to hear my mom and daddy tell me they love me. It's just, I love that. Who doesn't? But to hear God tell me he loves me, there's nothing else like it. There's nothing else like it. And I want to make him proud and I want to be worthy of his love. And I want that cost he paid for me, I want to be worthy of that. I don't know that I ever will be, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try. You know what I mean? <laughs> this was such a sweet one. And I hope you feel the love of God. I hope that you can feel him and sense how much he loves you and how he is all but basically begging us to get along with him, to give him some time, to sit in the quiet with him. The, I mean, how many devotions have we had? I know I can think of three right offhand where he's brought up that quiet place, that quiet place, spend some quiet time with him because he wants to talk to us. He don't want to yell at us. He don't want to bark at us. He wants to gently tell us how much he loves us. And I hope that you feel that and you hear that. I love you. You mean so much to me. I thank you for being here. I thank you for all your prayers, your encouragement, your support means so much to me. And I hope you have an amazing day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.